Psalm 26, verse 8. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. In light of the current circumstances that are going on in our country and in community, I wanted to start producing some devotional materials for you guys at home. In particular, because uh, many of us are, are not gathering corporately together in the house of the Lord, uh, the focus of those devotional materials will be the sanctuary. Uh, what is here on the walls that we see uh, as we come into the house of worship to bring much of that to you guys at home so that the next time we do get together and this pandemic has passed and all that has, has gone on um, has ended, we'll have a deeper appreciation of how uh, the sanctuary itself and the environment that we're in produces uh, or catechizes, is probably better, uh, us in the faith uh, as we sit in, and worship together corporately as God's people. We are also trying to uh, put out resources and such for families to conduct devotions at home and to uh, continue to grow in faith uh, even as we are, are separate from each other as the body of Christ. In particular, there are things that have been posted on our Facebook page and there will probably be more uh, stuff coming uh, and also potentially through email as well. And I, I, I take a moment to, to talk about that. The faith is nurtured at home. Uh, the, the church, when we come together as a congregation uh, to hear God's word and to receive the sacrament, that is our corporate act of worship and receiving God's gifts together. But that is really the, the pinnacle of our lives together as Christians. Where it starts is in the home. Uh, Luther understood that very much so when he began the catechism uh, in each section as the head of the household should teach his family. Luther understood that uh, what, what it, how the faith is learned and how people are developed in the faith is not just one hour on Sunday morning, but a, a continual uh, life of devotion, especially in the, the smallest unit of the faith, the family. So I encourage you guys, as no matter how big your family is, or uh, even if you're single, to, to take a look at those resources, to use that, to use the catechism, to read the scriptures together, um, and of course, to pray together. Uh, continue to pray for each other, uh, for the congregation, for the community, for the world, especially for our healthcare providers, uh, those who are, uh, going forward and continuing to, uh, in their efforts to combat the spread of this virus and to, to take care of those who are sick. Uh, also pray for our leaders, for wisdom to, to make good uh, decisions about how to handle uh, this current climate. Pray together, sing hymns together. Uh, another great way that the faith is handed on is in the words of our hymns. If you have hymnals at home, or if you can access them online, uh, the, especially the, the, the hymns that come from our Lutheran hymnody that are rich in meaning um, and that are a proclamation of both truth and uh, a, a response uh, from people to what God has done for them. It, it recounts, the, the, many of those hymns recount the whole story of faith, particularly what Christ has done for us um, and they were a reminder, these are songs that have been sung, uh, especially the older ones, for thousands of years in the church and helped continue to pass on the faith. With that, it is a unique time for us uh, as the church. Yet in the midst of this, God is still with us, still for us, and he is faithful. He is faithful to his promises that he made to you in your baptism. He is faithful to the promises that his church will stand and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He is faithful to those things. And regardless of how long our uh, corporate worship may be uh, sidetracked by this coronavirus, uh, and God will still remain 
your God, the one who has chosen you to be his child in the waters of baptism, who has fed and nourished you with his son's body and blood, who strengthens you with his own word. He will continue to be faithful through the remainder of this pandemic and through the remainder of all our time here on earth and the earth's time as well. And knowing that, we trust him. We trust that he will deliver on all that he has promised to us. And we also trust him that we might bring our needs before him. So with that, I invite you to pray with me and then I will pray the Lord's Prayer at the end. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you have given to us your word and the promise of the forgiveness of our sins, eternal life and salvation because of your Son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks that by Jesus' death and resurrection, he has opened to us the way of everlasting life. He has promised that the church will stand against the gates of hell, and that your church will prevail because your word endures forever. Strengthen us with your word and the promises you have made to us in our baptism. And keep us in the faith until the day that we can reconvene together to receive your son's body and blood and enjoy the fellowship of the communion of saints. Bless our homes and households where the faith is passed down and strengthen families as they continue to gather around your word and bring before you their petitions. Be with the health care providers who at this time are working to provide relief and aid to those who are in need. And give wisdom to our governmental leaders and to our leaders here at the church. We would continue to make good decisions that would proclaim your glory and also love and serve our neighbor. All these things we ask and all that is all that is on our hearts and minds at this time. We trust that you will work out according to your good in your time. We trust these things for we know that you have sent your son into this world and that he lives and reigns with you and he has granted to us the privilege of prayer. We pray in the way that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.